A few weeks ago, Mr. Beast showed his project in Africa where he spent $500,000 to dig 100 boreholes. That turns out to about $5,000 for one. $5,000 converted to Naira is about 7.5 million Naira going by 1,500 Naira to a dollar. So if Mr. Beast, an American, could build a borehole with all the infrastructure, overhead tank, the tower, everything, he could build this for $5,000. Why did the National Assembly budget a whopping $128,000 to build one borehole? What kind of civil infrastructure are they building around the borehole to require up to 192 million naira for one? Are they laying pipes in the entire communities? There is no justification for this high markup. The corruption is just too obvious. That's not the only highly inflated project in the National Assembly budget. There's also the 212 billion naira budgeted for 1,150 street lights. That turns out to 184 million naira for one. One street light is just the pole and the lighting. That's assuming it's not the solar street light. So why should it cost up to 184 million for one? Remember in the early 2000s, the former Senate president Chubo Kadibu was impeached because of the scandal that involved street lights running into about 100 and something million naira at the time. That was when naira had a lot of value. The street lights were supposed to be installed around the National Assembly. If Chubo Kadibo could be impeached because of 100 and something million naira, how much more are Babio for being involved in this scandalous corruption? Imagine installing one street light at the cost of 184 million naira. Or do they mean 184 million naira for each community where these street lights will be installed? It doesn't make any sense. There's another one, they budgeted 30 billion naira for 170 ICT projects. There's also the 7.6 billion naira for empowerment of traditional rulers. How do you empower people who are among the top 5% in Nigeria? These are kings, they are monarchs in their different communities. How do you empower them? If you have to spend as much as 7.6 billion naira to empower wealthy people, how much are you going to spend on poor Nigerians? We discovered some senatorial districts in this particular document. Some senatorial districts have up to 120 billion. And my senatorial district has just 2 billion. Mr. President, yes. Mr. President, in this budget, in this budget, that I have presented to you. I have facts. Yes, Senator Ningi deserves commendation, not suspension, despite the fact that it seems that he made this exposure because of selfish reasons, because his constituency got only 2 billion naira from the budget, while the Senate President Ababio got a whopping 18 billion naira for his constituency alone. Not to talk of all the money that the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry will spend in his constituency. If you look at the budget, they will buy freezers, many things for people in his constituency. Another thing exposed in this budget scandal is the Northeast Development Commission. Their budget is outrageous. This is a commission that was set up by the last administration, but by now they've already gotten personnel cost up to 126 billion naira. How many people do they employ? Do they just pay out money to people and call all of them personnel costs? If their personnel cost is this high and their capital expenditure only 6.6 .6 billion, they don't need to exist. They need to be existing in order to solve the problems for which they were created. How do they solve the problem in the Northeast? All the people that were displaced that are living in IDP camps, that as a result of what happened, the atrocities that happened in the region, how do they solve it with just 6.6 .6 billion per annum? Why they waste 120 something billion naira on personnel cost? This is outrageous. What do they want to achieve? It will take them years to achieve anything in the Northeast if they have to spend all this amount on personnel cost. Let's even assume that up to 1 million people were displaced in the Northeast. How do they start resettling them back to their homes and communities? If they need to build homes for them, even if it's a two-bedroom apartment, 
how much does it cost? How many two-bedroom apartments can one twenty-six billion naira build? This is the problem. If they spend all this money on just expenses, paying for salaries and other expenditure, they will never achieve anything. It's not about setting commission, setting up any commission they want to solve any problem or the other. It's about solving that problem actually, not spending money like they always want to throw around. How do you get displaced people back to their normal lives? You simply put them back in business. If they had a small business before or they were selling something, they had a stall, they were farmers before, set them back up. Give them capital to start running their farms again or start running their business. First of all, give them a home because they used to have home even if they were living in huts. But all were burnt down during the crisis. So you have to set them up. That should be the main objective of the Northeast Development Commission. Not paying salaries, spending 120 something billion naira on personnel cost. How many people do they need to employ in order to work and reach all the states in the Northeast? This is outrageous. It is now a settled matter that the budget was padded by up to 3 trillion naira. Senator Ninge should approach a court if he's interested to further the case. The court should be able to look at the matter and return him back to the house. Budget IT has done their own investigation and found out that the budget was actually padded. Look at the publication they made. They didn't add this in the main budget that was brought to the National Assembly. And after it was passed by the National Assembly, these were now added. There was no line-by-line -line budget the way they normally itemize them like it is done in this one. There was nothing like that. They just added this after the National Assembly members had passed the budget. So it's a pity that National Assembly members want to double as executive branch. They believe that they are entitled to earn money that they will use and award contracts for building infrastructure in their communities. It should not exist. Why should legislators earn money or be allocated money to go and build projects in their communities? We are not operating a parliamentary system of government. Even if we were, it should be passed in a budget and the people that are responsible, the Ministry of Works and any other agency that is responsible for building the projects, will award the contracts and get them built, not paying that money to a legislator to go and build by himself. They call it constituency project, but it should not be handled by the person representing the constituency. It should be handled by the executive branch. That's how it's supposed to work. We are in a presidential system. They can't be doing the work of the executive and be doing the work of the legislature. It's not possible. They should choose one. If you don't want to be a legislator, go and contest for executive office. If you are elected as a governor, a local government chairman, or you are appointed as a minister, then you can take charge of contracts award, not taking money, cash, to be paid into an account of a legislator and the person will be doing contracts. Imagine. And Nigerians are silent. They are doing as if nothing is happening. The amounts that were wasted in this budget alone that they are going to steal is outrageous. Do you know what and what can be achieved with all the billions and trillions wasted in this budget that will end up in politicians' pockets? Yes, Nigerians are doing as if nothing is happening. Until Nigerians say no, enough is enough, all this will continue. Thanks for watching.